In February 2018, a small group of detectives from Derbyshire and a tactical advisor from the National Crime Agency touched down in Riga, the capital city of Latvia. Their objective? To help coordinate and execute a series of raids across the Baltic state alongside some of the Latvian state police's top anti-slavery officers. The 20th of February 2018 was a really poignant date in our investigation. That's the date that we conducted our second wave of enforcement activity within the investigation. It was the day we were going to get the opportunity to try and capture uh, the OCG members or the gang members that had evaded capture uh, when we went through the door in the UK in September 2017. There were five people that we'd been chasing since September 2017 that we had a really good chance of capturing on that day. So we travelled from the UK to Latvia for that purpose. You're putting all your eggs in that basket around, going out, flying out to Latvia, looking at some enforcement. And I think it's, it's at that point where the reality of it is, yes, we may be flying at it, it may be something new. There is that little bit of excitement. It could all go horribly wrong. This was our one shot, really. Um, the investigation was already well through. We had offenders and members of the OCG, Organised Crime Group, who were in custody had been arrested in the September, so we were bound by custody time limits in our investigation. So we had to work fast, we had to move quickly. It was months and months of hard work that had led us to this point. Um, and I just remember waking up in the morning, um, thinking that everything was coming to a head. So it was quite an exciting opportunity for all of us involved, including us and the Latvians. There we are just outside the police headquarters in Riga. Uh, the final day of reckoning's come for the people that have uh, got away with uh, being arrested outside in the UK. Uh, hopefully all will go well and the five people that are outstanding in Latvia will be locked up probably within the next hour, hour and a half. So hopefully it is for a good day uh, and bringing them to the justice and getting them back up to the UK. Finally, the operation to snare the final members of the International Human Trafficking and Exploitation Ring was put into motion. Latvian intelligence officers had tracked down Karen Spelchers and Madara Stromain to a remote village where they were holed up in one of two addresses. The plan was for a specialist unit of Latvian firearms officers to sweep into the addresses in the hours of darkness and quickly secure the main suspects. Only once that was completed would they allow the Derbyshire contingent into the properties to search for the evidence they were looking for. We could get absolutely nowhere near. Their processes and their policies meant that we could not go into the addresses until they enforce. So we're watching all of this enforcement by far we were still not allowed to go anywhere near those addresses until they said we can. While the Latvia team were waiting at the rendezvous point, back in the UK, DC Chris Ford was poised and ready for a simultaneous strike. There's a few of us here this morning um, to provide uh, investigative support and operational support here uh, while they do what they're doing out there. But, so that's the first day, but the second day is to further arrest uh, an individual who we weren't able to um, to charge at the time of our first enforcement in September. So once um, once they've done what they need to do out there, we're going to go and uh, hopefully arrest her, interview her, and, um, uh, and see where that takes us. Eventually, with a team gathered at a rendezvous point a few miles from the addresses, the green light came. It was minus 16, freezing cold, I've never worn so many clothes in my whole life, I don't think, but there was definitely some excitement within the team and anticipation about what the, the following morning would bring, whether we would get those people that we were after, whether Karams and Madara would be at that address. Standing in the snow-laden streets of the remote Latvian village in temperatures of minus 16 degrees Celsius, Carl, Rick and the team saw the first of their targets escorted out of the property. Madara Stromain was arrested and taken into custody. Inside the property, her husband and fellow ringleader, Karen's Pelchez, handcuffed. I was able to walk through the door and I could see Karen's and Madara detained in the bedroom, startled and took by a surprise, clearly. And for me, it was that very moment of seeing him, knowing that he thought, or they both thought they were going to evade justice, knowing that we were able to work together to get them. There was no better feeling than that. When I spoke to Karams and his realisation that I was a British police officer, his face told a great picture and I remember that for the rest of my life. Hello. Hello. Go on then, give us the good news. Ah, excellent, excellent. All of them, brilliant. Are we 
good to go then? This will just be a soft approach, a knock on the door, see who's there and hopefully we get let in, uh, which uh, I'm confident we will. Listen, we've planned, we've planned this enforcement to do it this way for a while now, to do a joint enforcement both in the UK and Latvia. Um, so uh, I just want, I, I want it to be successful because that's, that's what we've been planning for and uh, as far as the case goes it, it would be, be the best for it to have everybody um, all those who are outstanding or remaining to be arrested, um, it would be great to have all of them uh, locked up together. Um, so yeah, there's a bit of pressure, but um, yeah, I'm confident. I'm confident we'll, uh, we'll get her. With the suspects under arrest, the officers' attention turned to the hunt for evidence. They knew the paper trail led to Latvia and strongly believed they would find further proof that the gang had exploited dozens of victims for their own financial gain. It didn't take long for them to find what they were after. Yep, yeah, that's the one that we registered. Yeah. That's for the Mercedes, is it? It says Mercedes there, yeah. but I can't remember the red on it. That's the one, that's the one that was, has been re re you know, the one that we're looking for. Right. That's the one that we're looking for, so that's been re registered from that to that. Yeah, it's oh, that, what do you need? Mm -hmm. In the UK there with A&R's details on because that's got the on Street dress on. Mm -hmm. uh, envelope with message. Ah right, okay, so it's just a... Oh yep, it's a Western Union for for at least five five thousand euros. Back in the UK, Chris Ford's early morning warrant had also been a success. I uh, made the decision to remand, remand uh, the lady that we've been interviewing all day, and uh, which is which is absolutely brilliant. I mean, she'll be held on remand until the end of the until the beginning of the trial with the rest of the defendants who are all, have already been charged, and they'll be aligned with those who are coming back from Latvia who the team got out there. So I've just been on the phone to Carl, uh, our DI, and he's uh, he's incredibly pleased. We've been doing some inquiries while we've been interviewing her today, and um, we came came across some material that um, indicated that she was potentially thinking about or making plans to leave the country. Uh, so uh, this is particularly uh, good for us because it means we got in there uh, quickly enough. We've intercepted quickly enough to stop that from happening. Uh, so, um, but but no, it's great news. It's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when days end like this, it's all worth it. As dawn broke over Latvia, the team travelled to two mansions owned by the Pelcher's family, which had been paid for with the proceeds of their crime. But the searching of those properties was halted when Rick made an altogether more shocking discovery back at the warrant addresses. There's a, a gentleman stood in front of me uh, and he had a t-shirt on and his jeans. Uh, in fact, I sent a message to certain people within the team saying, I think we have found another victim. Uh, he looked as though he'd been beaten. There was not an ounce of fat on his body. He looked so dishevelled. He wouldn't accept anything from us. You know, some of the investigation team just wanted to give him a bit of water, a sandwich, just something, just because that's what we are like here in the UK. He wouldn't accept anything. It's as though he was looking for permission of those that had enslaved him can I have something to eat? He was just moved away to one side by uh, some, of, some of our police colleagues from Latvia, but he just didn't know what to do. He didn't know what was happening. Uh, none of the, uh, the Roma communities that were there paid any attention to him. The team then found where the man had been living. Behind one of the addresses was a ramshackle outbuilding, once a sauna, but now a freezing hovel in which the man slept, with no heating, no bed, no toilet, and six inch icicles clinging to the roof outside. We thought we'd seen some things out, outside, uh, you know, back home, uh, but it, it's actually at a bit of a different level out here. Some of the conditions that we found one of the victims in is absolutely appalling, uh, to the point of how another human can be, being can do that to somebody else, it's beyond me. Uh, it's uh, quite a bit, quite an emotional morning, to be honest, to actually see that. Yeah, so I'm struggling to stand up. This is the room where the 69 year old male appears to have been living. Uh, it's absolutely tragic. You, you can see that this is uh, where he's allegedly been sleeping. There's just a dirty blanket 
and there's bottles of urine in here uh, it's just a hard hard wooden bed if you can call it a bed uh, it looks like there's potentially somewhere where you can make a little fire in the corner of this room but all the ceiling you can see it's covered in soot uh, and it absolutely stinks of soot when, once you're inside so uh, the ventilation in here is actually will be absolutely terrible um, and there's nothing in here there's, there's absolutely no electricity or anything in here uh, it's absolutely tragic but whilst he was living in those conditions having to do his business in a bottle living with only one one cover on a bench in those appalling conditions and me saying it doesn't actually give it it doesn't reflect reflect it you have to see it but yet 10 or 15 yards in front of him was a massive house with bedrooms all over hot water cold water beds quilts tvs all of that but he was expected to live outside in that garden you know and then we look at where his toilet facilities were there's a hole in the ground next to the shack now to me that's not right that's just not humane you know so when you start to talk around the victim side of it that that's something that will last and not, not just me but a lot of the investigation team as well a lot of people have seen the actual reality of vulnerability and why these people are exploited like they are uh, which again you know it, it does go it does sit with you because there is mention that he wouldn't have survived you know we don't know that you know but uh, our Latvian colleagues were, were concerned around there there was one more twist in the tale. The BMW 7 Series parked outside, costing upwards of £40,000 brand new, and which was used by the criminal group, was officially registered to none other than the man in the shack, something he never knew. So he's living in a shack, and this criminal group are actually getting their assets in other people's names just to avoid it being linked to them. It just shows they don't actually give one. They're not bothered about victims. They're a commodity. You know, we deal with guns, drugs, you know, robberies and everything else around there. But when you start to talk around that commodity of human beings, then, uh, you know, is it the right thing to investigate modern slavery? Damn right it is. You know, because it's that human element. What more do you want? <laughs>